Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Terry from PJ Pajama Party Yoga with TJ, Terry G. That's me. And I'm glad that you are uh, going to watch this class. I hope that it helps those that um, are not comfortable getting up and off the mat. And so I'm doing a chair yoga. And it also would be wheelchair friendly. Um, if we do any poses standing up, I will try and show some um, alternatives for just staying in your chair. I hope that it helps you to feel better. It always makes me feel better whether I do on the mat yoga or chair yoga or any kind of uh, stretching. All you basically need is your chair or your wheelchair. And I do recommend that you have a mat or something that's not slick um, down below. I just have my little mat here for when we're doing pressing our feet into the floor and stuff. It's it's a little nicer that way. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to sit here in um, an easy pose sitting in a chair position. And uh, we're going to do a few warm ups so that our joints are ready for any other movements that we will make uh, later on throughout the class. So here we go. Let's start with our um, wrist, just rotating our wrist around in a circle. Make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall, straight, that your head is uh, over your shoulders, and then reverse that twist on your wrist. And my right wrist is clicking. Strange. Doesn't usually do that. Okay, and then we're going to spread our fingers apart. Put it up here. And fist apart. And while you're doing this, um, try and uh, squeeze your glutes when you squeeze your fists. So you should raise up just a tiny bit. If you're squeezing, exercising your glutes. Uh, which will help with any kind of sitting. I'm going to keep those glutes nice and strong. And let's do uh, two more of these. Really spread those fingers and squeeze them. Squeeze your, your glutes. Pulling in my lower abs. Squeezing my arms. Strengthening and release. Just bring that down to your side. <clears throat> We're going to do some shoulder um, warm up. So just shoulders up to the ears, fully squeeze. And anytime that I say squeeze, don't forget your glutes and down. Squeeze glutes, close, raise your abs. That's tightening your abs and release. Squeeze. And release. Let's do two more of those. Squeeze. Really squeeze in my glutes. Squeeze in my abs. Squeeze in my shoulders up. And release. Last one. Make it your best. Squeeze. And release. Oh, that felt good. Let's do a few shoulder rolls. I'm just going to take both shoulders. Gently roll them back. I'm not going to do forward shoulder rolls. Let's do about 10 of these. There's three. Simply because we do enough forward bending. Five. And so we want to do some counter actions for all that forward slumping that we do throughout the day. And this is one of the best ways to do it. I think there's eight, nine. 10. And then we're going to take our shoulders. I'm going to turn um, kind of my back to the camera so you can see. I'm going to try to squeeze my uh, shoulder blades together. So I'm really pressing, which then makes your chest lift up and out. We're going to do uh, 10 of those. So press. When you do that, you should really be able to feel the oxygen can fill your lungs a lot easier. So when you do it, let's inhale, exhale, really squeezing. There's three, 
inhale, exhale, release, and squeeze back. Looks like I don't even have arms when I do it right. There's four. Inhale. And exhale, squeeze back. Woo. Inhale, one more. Exhale, squeeze. And we're holding for just a few seconds here and then release. I'm going to, um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to bend forward just a little bit just because I felt like I need to counterbalance that for a moment. So I'm just bringing my shoulders forward. I said I wasn't going to, but we are. Because we did a lot of back stretch. So I'm trying to balance that. Uh, next, we will uh, lubricate our neck. So let's just turn our head to the right. Our nose is now hopefully almost over our shoulder, depending on the flexibility of your neck. And then return to center. We're going to do to the right two more times. Inhale. Exhale. To the right. A breath or two on your next exhale. Return to center for your last one. Inhale. Exhale to the right. Two full rounds of breath. On your next exhale, return to center. And then we're going to go to the left. Inhale. Exhale to the left. Next exhale, return to center. Two more times to the left. Inhale. Exhale to the left. Next exhale, return to center. Last time to the left. Inhale. Exhale, turning only your head to the left. On your next exhale, return to center. Now we're going to take our hands and just kind of gently massage our neck. Uh, that was a lot of twisting. It's important to um, practice that daily if you can, just so that when you're driving, you can look and see if there's a car coming behind you. So that's kind of very important. Or if you have kids in your back seat, quick look to see what they're doing. And I'm just gently massaging my neck and shoulders. I'm kind of getting down a little bit into that shoulder blade. Oh, that feels really good. Oh, While well, we have our hands up here, let's do a little uh, rotation. This is another good shoulder one in a different position. If you have shoulder issues, um, be mindful of what you can and cannot do. Always be mindful of anything that we're doing. If you know it isn't good for your body, do not do it. Just try something else. And now we are going to relax our jaws. We don't think about our jaws much, but our jaws do a lot of work. Right now it's doing a lot of work talking. Uh, it did a lot of work while I ate breakfast and lunch, chomping down on things. And um, so let's just take a moment and close your eyes down for a second and think about the right side of your jaw and um, try to envision, does it feel tight? And now I'll go to the left side of your face on the jawline. Does that one feel tighter than the right or do they feel the same? And let's just uh, open our mouths wide as you can and close. Let's put our fingertips on that um, jaw hinge. So open and close. Open wide, wide, wide open. And close 
And then let's just gently massage the jaw. Just thinking about uh, your jaw and relaxing it can relieve a lot of stress in your life because you tend to hold a lot of stress up there for many reasons. Maybe you want to say something and you, you don't. Maybe you want to say something and you can't for whatever reason. Maybe you're just angry. Let's get rid of all of those negative emotions. And now I'm just massaging along the jaw bone to the point of my chin. I want to get to the point of my chin. I'm going to take my um, pointer fingers and just go and massage along the gum line between my gum and where the teeth meet until I get back to the jaw hinge where that joint hinges. And we're going to now come back across the top and starting where the jaw hinges and massaging along the where the gum and the teeth meet which feels really good. This is really good for your teeth health too to massage your gums and then when we get to the middle, we're going to drop our fingers down. I'm going to use a couple of fingers here. I like it better for the jawline. And I'm going to go back up towards where the jaw hinges, the jaw joint, the TMJ. And then I'm going to take my glasses off and I'm going to... Um, massage up along the eye socket and around the eyebrows just kind of in a circular motion don't forget to be sitting up nice and straight pulling your abs in and then let's reverse that and go the other direction along the eye socket which is down below the eye and then up around the eye brow ridge just ruffling my eyebrows in the wrong direction i'm going to straighten my eyebrows out and then i'm just going to place the tips of my fingers lightly over my eyes which that feels very nice if you want to have a better rest at night you can wear an eye mask because putting a little pressure over your eyes uh, relaxes the brain and calms it down so that you're not constantly thinking. You'd be surprised at what that can uh, kind of block out. And then we're going to bring that down. And let's just massage our head just a tiny bit. Probably mess up my hair. It doesn't matter. My hair is crazy anyway. It goes where it wants to go. And I'm going to do a little tapping on my head. And I'm just taking my fingertips and kind of lightly um, tapping on them. Like you might tap on your desk. And bring that around the face, around the neck, front of the neck. And around the collarbone. And I'm going to go uh, with my right hand and tap down my right arm and up. And with my left hand down my right arm and up. And then right here, um, right below where the throat is and your bone starts, if you tap right there, that is giving your um, thymus a little bit of a massage and uh, also gets into the thyroid and parathyroid if you're up kind of in that little fleshy area which is great for your immune system so let's just bring that to stillness and i think we've done the head uh, the neck the shoulders so let's do a little bit of some um, side twist or let's do some 
not twist yet, but some uh, side stretches. So my right hand is going to hang down below the chair or your wheelchair if you're in a wheelchair. And if you have shoulder issues, keep the left hand uh, below your shoulder height, either this way or this way. If you do not, you can inhale the left arm up and then squeeze over. We're just bending straight over. I'll turn this way so you can see my back should remain straight. I'm just bending like I'm between two panes of glass. And don't be bending like this or bending back just a straight bend at the waist and we'll hold this for two breaths on your next exhale sit up and we're going to do that two more times on the right side inhale and exhale as you lean over Exhale up. Inhale. Exhale over. Hold it for two rounds of breath. On your next exhale, bring that back up to center. That should feel really good. And we're going to go to the left side. So we're going to be raising the right arm up and over and the left hand is going to try to reach down to the ground. Ready? Here we go. Inhale up. Nice and straight. Exhale over. Remember to keep the back in a straight line. Your neck is just following with the bend. As you can see when I come up, I'm not moving my head at all. My neck is just bending with the body. So don't be stretching your neck like this to get over. Inhale up and exhale over. We've already done some neck stretches. We don't want to put the spine at a cramp. On your next exhale, come up. Inhale up. Exhale over. And I feel like each time I can uh, exhale over just a fraction, a little bit longer. I don't know if I really am, but it just feels like I'm starting to stretch out. And on your next exhale, come up to center. Now we're gonna do our twist. And how we do our twist is our feet are firmly on the floor or wherever they can be kind of stabilized. And we're going to, um, Twist from the upper torso. Try to keep your legs and your hips facing forward. And you're twisting like this. Don't be twisting like this. That's not going to do uh, the, what we want to do with our stretching and, and lengthening of our muscles. We want to just twist from here up. Ready? Inhale. And we're going to twist to the right. Our right arm is, mine's draping over the back of the chair. My left hand is on my right thigh. And we're gonna just hang out here for a couple of breaths. On your next exhale, return to center. Very simple move, but very powerful. Great for your digestion, for spine health. Inhale, and just twist moving your right hand behind you on the back of the chair, your left hand resting. It's just resting. I'm not pulling on my right thigh. Exhale and return to center. Inhale. Exhale, twist to the right. Last time. Make sure you're Hips and your knees are not moving, they're staying forward. On your next exhale, return to center. And now we're gonna go to the left, same side on the left. Inhale, twist to the left, bringing the left arm behind the chair, right arm 
to the left thigh. And again, don't be pulling yourself or trying to wrench yourself further around. This is just a twist of what your body does naturally. On your next exhale, return to center. We don't want to wrench our bodies. We want to work with our bodies. Inhale and twist to the left. Couple of breaths. On your next exhale, return to center. I thought I took that out of the room, but apparently I laid it down when I was getting the computer set up. Okay, so I think we've got one more twist to the left. Inhale and twist to the left. If we did four on this side, I apologize. On your next exhale, return to center. And then just sit here for a minute and kind of feel how does that feel. I feel really open through my diaphragm. Uh, my upper torso feels stretched out. I don't have any kinks. I think I worked that out when I did that little neck massage. If you have anything in your upper body that you feel like you need to address at this time, this is a good time to maybe take that extra little whatever you need. Uh, shoulders or your neck or something because we're going to start working on the lower part of the body so everyone is ready let's start with our um, toes just pressing them i'm going to sit forward a little bit in my chair because i'm kind of short and i can't get good leverage sitting straight in the chair so I'm just going to take my toes and just squeeze the toes down like I'm trying to pick the mat up. If you have a wash rag or something, you want to throw it down on the floor and pick it up with your toes. You could do that and then and then set it down. Um, so we're just working the toes, which is a good thing to keep the feet flexible. And now we're just going to lift our heels up and down. Heels up and down, heels up and down, heels up and down, heels up and down. And then I'm going to rotate the right ankle, so I'm lifting the left leg up. If you have trouble, you can hold your left leg up and uh, rotate your ankle and then reverse. If you can hold it with just your leg strength, this is another good strengthening for the leg and for the the hip flexor and then I'm going to set that down and now I'm going to do the same thing with the left ankle I'm going to lift my left leg up and rotate also lifting the left leg up um, helps to stimulate the lower part of the colon and then reverse that and then set that foot back down and let's uh, bring the toes like you're bringing the toes up into the air. I don't know if you can see my toes. I'm just lifting my toes up and setting them down. Lift them up and set down. Up and down. The heels are staying on the, the mat. Up and down. Up and down. And now I'm going to um, work on the knee joints. So let's do one knee at a time. We're going to lift the knee up and just rotate from the knee joint. And then let's rotate back. And then set that down. Bring the left knee up and rotate from the knee joint. This is a safe way to uh, get some lubrication going in the knee joint because you're not putting any stress on it. It's just whatever your leg can circle. And again, if you have issues with your knees and you cannot rotate them, then do not rotate them. 
and bring that down. Now we're going to take both legs and bring them out. And we're going to point and flex, point and flex, point and flex, point and flex. And then bring that to stillness. And if you are in a wheelchair and you do not have leg mobility, you can just do the same things with your arms that we are doing with our feet. And that will at least get the blood circulating <clears throat> and moving. And now we're going to um, do a little bit of hip opening. So we're going to, do, to bring the knee up and put it out. Back in and down. And again, you can do your arms. You just do these. We can do these together and down. Up. You can do this way. And down. Up. The main thing is just to be moving. We'll do one more on the right side. So up. out and down. Now we're going to go to the left side. So I'm going to, and I'm just showing the arm movements. If you don't want to do arm movements, then feel free to not do the arm movements. Knee up, arms up, bend at the elbows, swing the leg out, arms down and down. You can do any kind of movements. I'm going to bring the arms up this way. Swing the leg out and back and down. So you can make it a variation and down. Let's do uh, two more. Up, swing out, in and down. What last one? Up, swing out bring it back and down. That opens your hip flexors up. Let's do a little bit of a um, forward fold while we're here. So we're just going to be bending from the hip flexors over, trying to keep our back straight. Don't, and I mean by that is don't be doing a cat and thinking that you're bending over further, you're going to just bend. If this is as far as you bend without getting your back compromised, then you just go here. Everyone is different. Uh, and hopefully, if you continue to practice, you will be able to bend further and further over without hunching and making your back curve. Because this helps to lengthen the spine and stretch all of the muscles that are involved and you bending over and tying your shoes or bending over to pick something up. So here we go. Inhale and forward fold to your point. Try to keep your uh, sit bones on the chair. It's hard for me because I can't really touch the floor fleshly. I'm going to use a different chair next time. And we're going to do a couple of rounds of breath here. On your next exhale, come up. I'm going to face forward again. Inhale. And you can bring your arms up on your inhale, like if you were standing in a mountain pose or Tadasana. Up and forward. I'm just coming to this point. And this is also great for digestion. Stimulates all of the internal organs. And then we're going to, on your next exhale, sit up. And one more time, inhale. And forward fold. Do a couple of inhales here. I have my elbows resting on my 
thighs, but if you can come down and touch your toes, if you have to keep your hands here, whatever you need to do to support yourself so that you're not overstretching, then that's how your forward fold would look. On your next exhale, sit up nice and straight. And we're going to do a um, seated pigeon pose, and we are going to bring the right leg up cross the ankle over the left thigh so that we are kind of at a number four. And then we can bend forward just a little bit. You can take your hand and rest it on your leg. Don't press down, but just resting your hand there puts a little um, more weight so that it, it will come down a little bit, not much. We don't want to overstretch that. And you can stay here, or you can, on your exhale, bend forward, which then gets a really good uh, stretch through that lumbar and the sciatic nerve. And we're just going to uh, do two more of those gentle inhale and exhale. So inhale, sitting up straight, exhale a tiny bit forward, or just stay sitting up. Exhale up, inhale, exhale. I should have said inhale up. And then rest that foot down on the ground. Bring the left foot crossing the ankle over the, left, the right knee. And I'm resting my hand here. Don't rest it on your knee. It can be up on your upper thigh, or you can rest it on your calf, or you can keep it off of your leg completely and just rest it in your lap. So we're going to inhale. And if you can, comfortably forward fold. Do not do anything that hurts. On your next inhale, raise up and then exhale over, We're making this a fluid movement. Inhale up, exhale forward or stay sitting straight up. I'm a lot more flexible on this side. I have some trouble on my right side so I don't uh, bend as far. And inhale up, place that foot down. And let's just kind of uh, pat the mat with your feet. And again, if you do not have mobility in your legs or cannot do that, you can just pat your hands or you, we can do both pat our hands and our feet. This is uh, stimulating the blood so that it's moving back up because we're sitting. And then bring that to stillness. And if you are mobile and can stand up, we're going to stand up. If you cannot, just stay in your chair. And we're going to um, hold the back of the chair. And if you are in the chair and cannot get up, I will show you an alternative to what we're going to do here. So we're going to um, stand up nice and tall. We're going to take a step back and just bend I want to get sorry I got that's next we're going to place our hands in the seat of the chair and you are in a uh, downward dog if you can go down to your elbows you may do that if you cannot stay with your palms on the seat of the chair if you're staying in the chair then just we're going to just raise our hands up and just tip forward. And that will be your down dog. If you can raise the feet up, you can do that both. If you cannot, just tip forward. Here we go. Whichever position you choose, those are the three ways to do it or four ways. So we're going to inhale, exhale over into our standing down dog. 
I'm going to come down on my elbows. It feels more comfortable for me to be on my elbows. And we're going to raise our toes up and down. Up and down. If you're in the chair, you can just do some uh, toe raises. Let's do a couple more. And bring that to stillness. <clears throat> and then we're going to um, take our right leg and bend our knee and lift our leg up and down. Just coming straight up in the air. And I will you continue doing that one. If you're in the wheelchair, you're just going to be doing this. Up and down. And if you cannot do the leg part, then we're just going to raise our arms up and down. We just want to keep moving the whole time that we're here. Uh, for those standing in your down dog position, bring that leg down to stillness. We're going to go to the left side. So we're going to um, bend the knee, stabilize on the right foot, and bring the foot straight up and down. Up and down. Knee bent, leg up, knee down, foot down. Knee bent, foot up, knee down, foot down. Knee bent, foot up, knee down, foot down. One more. Knee bent, foot up, knee down, foot down. It's kind of important to do that in a stage instead of just doing this, because when you're doing this, you're not thinking about how your muscles are working and moving together. Whereas opposed, if you're doing bending the knee, kicking the foot up, bending the foot back down, placing the foot down there. You are using more strength in your muscles and that is important. After we do um, that down dog, this is where we're going to use the back of the chair. We're going to do a tree pose. You can hold the back of the chair or you can get in your position and try to balance without holding on to anything. And if you are not mobile enough to be out of the chair, you can do your tree pose like this. And if you cannot move your feet very well, you can do your tree pose with your branches and just hold your tree different positions just so we're getting some movement in the arms and upper body and the blood still flowing. So here we go. Choose your tree. Either you're doing upper branches or you're standing and doing your tree trunks. Ready? And we're going to inhale the foot up. The toe can rest on the floor. It's actually better if I was in the mat have a little bit better grip. I'm going to bring it up here so you can see my head, I think. Yeah, that's good. So your toe can be here, here. If you're really flexible. You can bring it up here. Just don't put it on the knee. If you have it near the knee, try to put so that your heel is below the knee or above the knee. Don't put it right on the knee because you don't want to be pressing any uh, pressure on the inside of that knee joint. I'm just going to stay here. This is a nice, comfortable position. And we will, uh, let me get my clock. We're going to try to hold this position for 30 seconds. And you can do it holding or you can do it uh, not holding. Ready? Go. 30 seconds. Whoa, I'm kind of wobbly today. Well, I need to quit trying to look down at that clock. 
I have to put it in a different place. There's 15 seconds. Make sure you're breathing, that your knee is out at an angle, because this is a hip opener and a strengthener. Four, three, two, one. Bring it all down slowly and walk it out. That's not a good place for that. Now we're going to do a, uh, I'm kind of playing around with tree pose. I made up some, some things. So this is traditional tree pose. Now we're going to do um, tree pose moving, like with the hurricane Ivan right now. And that's just going to be leg in and out, in and out. And let's do uh, 10 of these. One. Woo! Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I should have came down slower, but I was losing my balance a little bit. And then we're going to do one more. And again, if you are only in the chair, you can be bringing the knee in and out, kind of what we did earlier. Um, try to keep the toe stabilized instead of doing this one this time. We're just doing that one. And if your knee isn't you can't move your legs well enough. You could just do some side sways with your tree branches to get a little bit more stretching on the sides. We're going to continue on. We have one more, I call it tree pose sequence here. And I'll turn this way so you can see. And we're just going to bring our, our tree up to the front and swing it back. And we're going to do 10 of those. Try and keep your leg nice and straight. I'm just bringing my knee. I'm not swinging it way up. I'm just bringing it um, like this. I guess I could keep it like this. This would be better. Just for this nice glute exercise. If you are still seated, try just tightening your glutes and release. Tighten, release. Tighten, release. Tighten, release. Tighten, release. One more. Tighten, release. And shake your legs out. Switch to the other side. And we'll do our tree sequence on this side, which is, we're going to hold this. I think we held it for 30 seconds. You can keep your fingertip, your hand clasp on it, or you can bring your, your tree limbs up. Ready, go. 30 seconds. A great balance um, exercise here, which is very helpful when you're trying to uh, keep your balance as you get older, it's very important. There's 20 seconds. Ooh. When I look down, I lose my balance. Need a clock up there. And there we go. I didn't look down soon enough to count from five, four, three, two, one, but we were there. If you held it longer, awesome. Now for this one, in and out, in and out. I'm trying to keep my foot on my leg. And there's three, four, five. This is a great balance challenge. Whoops, six, seven, eight, nine and ten 
and then important is to regain your control and lower down control. That was hard. Now for the, uh, the back, the swinging for your glute exercise. If you're just gonna remain seated or maybe you just get tired and you wanna sit back down, go right ahead and squeeze your glute and release. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, four, release, five, release, squeeze, release, seven, release, eight, release, squeeze, release, last one, squeeze, 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 maybe hold your hands up and release, lower down slowly. Awesome. Shake that out. <clears throat> And then we're gonna sit back down. And I'm gonna sit this way for a moment for some uh, seated cat cow. And when you're doing this cat cow, the cat is you inhale, round your back. I've been saying don't round it, but here on this one we do. And try to round it from here up. And then we exhale and to kind of doing a very miniature back bend. This is really great for the spine. And we're going to do, um, oh, we're going to do three rounds of this. But the trick is when we do this, we're going to inhale into cat and we're going to hold it here for three rounds of breath. So we're holding it. On your last exhale, come into cow and hold it for three rounds of breath. I'll stay this way so you can see the spine moving. That's probably two breaths on your next exhale. Up into cat. Three rounds of breath. On your next exhale, into cow. Three rounds of breath. And then just exhale to neutral. I think we did that three times. What else do I have? Um, while we are seated in the chair you can do warrior one or you can stand up and do it i'll show it in the chair first and for warrior one you will turn to the left put the left leg back so you're still seated and hands will come up looking slightly up to the ceiling where the ceiling and the wall meet don't throw your head back. It should stay lined up with your spine. This is warrior one. And they can bring that down. So we'll do that one. Go to the other side. Inhale. And exhale. If you want to stand, maybe you're more uh, adventurous and you feel that you can stand for warrior one. Again, we will be facing the left. Step your left leg back. Your left leg is, my foot is angled a tiny bit out just for the safety of my knee. And you bend your left knee so that it is over your left ankle and this is warrior one standing. Or you can have your hands here or in prayer. And then you can flip to the other side. Stand straight into Nasana, mountain pose. Step your left leg back. Bend your right knee. It's important to get the right posture 
and then inhale your arms up or to prayer or just stay on your hips. And then straighten your leg, bring your left leg up to meet the right. We're gonna do um, those one more time because we did it seated, standing, and I'm gonna continue standing. You decide if you wanna do back in the chair or if you wanna do another standing warrior one. So we're going to inhale, exhale the, the right leg back, stabilize, bend the knee, and inhale your arms to your sides, whichever position you like. I'm gonna inhale mine up. And we're just gonna hold it here. We'll hold it for 30 seconds. This is a great uh, bone building strength when you're in a position locked and holding, balancing, using your muscles. It helps to strengthen your bones. Five, four, three, two, one, step up and bring your arms down. And we're going to go to the other side. So I'm facing um, the right side. I'm going to bring my left leg back, <clears throat> bend my right knee over my right ankle. My hips are trying to face towards the front of the mat, the skinny part of the mat. Inhale your arms and your favorite position and hold it for 30 seconds. You should really feel it on your thighs. Even if you're doing it in the chair, it still is uh, building strength and fire burning in the thighs. Because you should try to lift up maybe a couple of inches so that you're using your muscles and not just sitting. And if you're just sitting, tighten your muscles so that you're using them and strengthening. Five, four, three, two, one, straighten your leg, bring your left leg up to meet the right, shake it out. And uh, next we're just going to do a um, wide legged forward fold. If you need to sit down, the legs are gonna come out wide and you're just going to fold over. You can fold over to touch the mat. You can fold over this far and just uh, have your hands on your thighs for support. Whatever is your forward, wide-legged forward fold. If you want to stand up, <clears throat> we will do wide-legged forward fold. This one, we're going to hold it for three breaths and come back up and repeat it. Inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, forward fold. Let your head rest between your arms. Or if you can't fold over that far, just your head is uh, staying in line with your back. On your next exhale, bend your knees generously and slowly roll up. One more time. Inhale up. And forward fold over. If you need to have your knees bent, because you want to place them on the mat, then bend your knees. Whatever you need to do that makes your body feel comfortable. On your next exhale, bend your knees generously, rolling up slowly. And we're all going to take a seat back in our chair for our final um, 
pose, which is just seated Shavasana. And just bring your eyes down. And um, think about the freedom that you have to uh, look at these kinds of classes or other classes also. Uh, that we have the freedom to get in our car and just drive off if we feel like it. And about the countries that don't have that privileges or it's scary to even be on the roads. I am praying diligently for those left back in Afghanistan and uh, just other countries around the world where people are oppressed and they don't have the freedom we have. Sometimes we think about our freedom as something different, but listening to the news has made me think about what real freedom is. So just take a moment to uh, think about that and be appreciative of our country, no matter the faults that it does have, that we are indeed free. And thank a soldier for that freedom. You can sit there for a moment with your eyes closed. I'm going to read um, from my little cards that I, how I name my classes. This one was freedom. I don't look to see what the words are. I just pick one out and that's what I had for this week. It was very fitting. You are free to change your experience by changing the criteria upon which you base your decisions. Let go of old trapping and express your uniqueness. We all need to do that from time to time, don't we? And then I found another quote from Oliver Wendell Holmes, <clears throat> which makes me proud of the country I live in, of being an American. One flag, one land, one heart, one hand, one nation evermore. Try to keep that prayer in mind as we go about today and maybe have disagreements with what some people are doing or not doing. And that remember we are one nation. Bring your hands to heart center, bowing our heads. I honor the light in you and ask that you honor the light in others as you pass through this day. Namaste. I'll see you next week. I hope you have a great weekend. A great week, great end of the day, a great night.